Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, friends, organizations. My name is Bruce Maine. I want to welcome you all to this solemn, this beautiful ceremony, the Sermon at the Mount here. My third year of doing this emceeing event, it's my pleasure and my honor to be back again this season. I want to thank Paul Emmert. I want to thank Todd Mitchell, the Memorial Day Committee from American Legion Post 31, for the honor of being the MC again on this Memorial Day, where we indeed, as we should all year long, honor those, those wonderful men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice, laying down their lives for us so that we can enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy every single day in this very unique nation on earth. Not only those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, those who are still serving to this very day, and those who took that risk to fight for us who are still with us to this very day. We can't say it enough. Sometimes I think we don't say it often enough. But on a day where a lot of people associate it with cookouts, barbecues, special sales, making the retailers happy, one thing we should always keep in mind, and that is to take a few minutes, not only on a Memorial Day, but of every day that we enjoy life in the United States, no matter what the situations may be, we have that right of dissent, we have that right of our voice to be heard, our liberties, and it's for the very people. We are honoring this very day that we owe that endless debt of gratitude for allowing us to do this very thing. And we should always remember that. You know, years ago, there was a magnificent ballpark down in Baltimore, Memorial Stadium. How about that? Memorial Stadium was built and dedicated to honor veterans, the men and women who did fight and serve us, and served us very well. There were nine words on that wonderful facade when you walked in toward that ballpark. I remember those words to this day. And when the new ballpark was built, those words were then transposed to that new ballpark. Nine simple words. Time will not dim the glory of their deeds. And when you think about that, that's what this is all about the glory of their deeds. And that's why I myself am proud and privileged to be a part of this solemn, this wonderful, beautiful ceremony, the parade that just ended. And now it culminates with this beautiful event. First up on our program here this morning, and it looks like the weather gods are going to cooperate with us it was a little bit hazy and foggy this morning, but hey, you know what? I think it's going to brighten up, and I think we're going to be just fine. I want to introduce to you from St. John's Catholic Church, our invocation of the morning, Father Mark Bilek. As we begin our observance this morning, let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you praise and thanksgiving for the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy in this great country of ours that we call home. We take a moment to ask for your grace, your mercy, and your peace. As we observe this day of remembrance, 
as we remember all of our brave men and women who have fought and defended our country, our liberties, and our freedoms that we enjoy. Our Lord Jesus said, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. They lay down their lives so that others might be able to live. They lay down their lives in service to our country. They lay down their lives so that we might enjoy freedom and peace. Gracious God, we ask that as we continue to honor them this day, we might hold them in the most respectful remembrance, that they might be held in the arms of your grace, and that they might always know the respect, appreciation, and love of a grateful nation. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, Father Mark. I want to call now, next on order here, Miss Edith Burbage. Now, Miss Edith Burbage is going to grace us with a rendition of a song that many people thought for so many years should have been our true national anthem. I always consider it our second anthem, which is just as gracious and just as wonderful to hear. Ms. Burbage, accompanied by our good friends, the Westminster Municipal Band, with her rendition of America. Thank you, Ms. E. The Burbage. And now I will call upon the chaplain of the American Legion Post 31 with his rendition of a speech that many felt def de defined our nation the way it is and the way it could become and the way a visionary speech. A lot of people misunderstood it at the time. But over time, the words became very clear what was being said at a time when the nation was in a clear division. It was a speech that polarized and galvanized at the same time. I call upon Phil Luster with the Gettysburg Address. Thank you, sir. Good morning. <clears throat> The Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln, a speech on the occasion of the dedication of the National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in the great civil war testing where that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that, that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated 
far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work, which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Now I'd like to read a poem that, I, I uh, being a Vietnam veteran, I sat down with a bottle of wine. I wrote this, uh, Fall of Saigon, uh, March of 75. And it begins, the virgin laughter of youth embalms the skies. As budding pilgrims of trust, you migrate. Brazen out of fear, confident with uncertainty, you confronted death and lost. Now your hopes and dreams lay silent as churchyards flourish with sprouting trophies. Who but God and family care to remember your bouquets of flesh? For your country now has amnesia. I will remember my legionnaires. What's that? What did you say? Yes, yes, it's too late to claim proxy. Thank you. That speech, not only about the fall of Saigon, but when you take that speech by Phil Luster, that, or, or that, that poem by Phil Luster, doesn't it fit? Doesn't it transcend all conflicts, all battles, all wars? I certainly think it does. Thank you, Phil. All right. As you will notice behind me, there's some beautiful wreaths here to commemorate this wonderful ceremony and this beautiful occasion. I now call on the mayor of Westminster, the Honorable Joe Dominic, and the chief of police of the city of Westminster, Chief Jeffrey Spaulding, for the placement of the city wreath. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. The beautiful wreaths, some in front, some behind, and we thank everybody so very much for these wreaths, for the decorum of this event. Now, I want to present at this time our keynote speaker here this morning, and what a fantastic career of serving his nation, serving the state of Maryland, serving all of us, and to this day, serving as Deputy Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. His name is Bob Finn. Bob Finn started serving our nation in 1967. Volunteered, joined the Army to become a paratrooper. One year of training, including 90 days of non-commissioned officer school and ranger school. He graduated as Staff Sergeant. Before attending airborne school, he did a tour of duty in Vietnam, assigned as a squad leader in the 173rd Airborne Brigade. He did a one-year tour, assigned as a Ranger Mountaineer instructor, leaving active duty in 1970. But that was not enough for Bob Finn. Getting out of military duty, leaving in 1970, didn't last very long. He felt like he still needed to serve his nation and to serve us, and this he did very, very well in 1972. A military career that would last another 31 years. He joined the company of the 20th Special Forces Group in the Maryland Army National Guard. He earned his Special Forces qualification promoted to Sergeant First Class. 
Upon graduation from Maryland Officer Candidate School, the OCS, he then served in various leadership positions, infantry rifle platoon leader, company commander, special forces, A-team executive officer, how impressive is that, and a commander before returning to active duty with the National Guard. Quite a resume so far. In 1984, active duty reserve officer commanding a cadre of instructors to train leaders of units from Maryland and Virginia for the newly reactivated 29th Infantry Division. He served on active duty status in the Maryland Army National Guard for 19 years, retiring in 2003 as a colonel, infantry brigade commander, and during his military service, you talk about awards, Bob earned his. 20 awards, decorations, including combat infantry badge, airborne ranger special services, special forces qualification, legion of merit, two bronze stars, and several com commendation medals. His civilian career at the same time, he was doing double duty, multitasking if you will in 1970, worked as a land surveyor. He obtained a property line license. In 1980, he joined the Maryland State Police, served four years as a resident trooper at the Westminster Barrack before being asked to return to active duty as a Maryland National Guardsman in 1984. In 2003, as we fast forward a little bit through an illustrious career, upon retiring from military service after 35 years, Bob Finn was selected by Secretary Hutchins to join the Maryland Department of Veterans Affairs. Working under Secretary Hutchins and Owings, he established the department's outreach and advocacy program. How important and crucial is that to our veterans? Very much so. And Bob has been a big part of it. He created doing updates bringing things into clear focus for the Veterans Affairs and streamlining and at the same time performing wonderful duty. In 2005, he joined the Maryland State Police working in the Office of Strategic Plans to create their strategic plan and working on a number of process improvements. Looking ahead, looking forward, thinking outside of the box. Sometimes that's what it takes and Bob Finn exemplifies that. He left state service in 2007, worked as a program manager and vice president of a private security firm, providing armed security officers for 10 Navy installations across five states. What a busy and what a great career. In 2014, Bob again rejoined the Maryland State Police as property officer until assuming his current uh, position with the Department of Veterans Affairs. And he looks forward again with an optimism I'm sure he has with the department's dedicated employees to provide the best service to many, the many thoughts, long overdue to serve our veterans in the Department of Veterans Affairs Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and my privilege to introduce to you, I present Mr. Bob Flynn, or Finn, Bob Finn. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear those resume about yourself, you wonder who that person was, right? I mean, what are that, me? My wife will tell you all about it, though. I married the girl next door, that Belinda, she's the one wearing red over here. And she'll tell you about my, my history. Well, good morning, Mayor Dominic, County Commissioners, elected officials, military personnel, veterans, and guests. I bring greetings from Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, and Maryland Veterans Secretary George Arnes. I also want to thank American Legion Post 31, especially its commander, Paul Emmert, for inviting me here today for this uh, wonderful ceremony. Memorial Day is always a wonderful day, and I'm honored to be here this, this morning. If Mary Bostick Shellman were here today, I believe she would be glad to know that 150 years after she started the first Memorial Day parade on May 30th, 1868, that we are still having the parade as the American Legion promised her in the 1930s. And with that, I think we know, owe a round of applause to the American Legion
for taking over responsibility for this parade and doing a wonderful job today. Thank you so much, American Legion. And as Mary, Mary and others did, we are visiting the cemetery and laying flowers at the graves of those who died during the Civil War and in all wars, to include the grave of Lieutenant John Murray of the Confederate Army, who died at Corbett's Charge in June of 1863 and is buried at the Westminster Ascension Church across from the old courthouse. Old courthouse. Also buried at the cemetery is U.S. Colored Troops Corporal Samuel Butler, who served in the Civil War, moved to Westminster after the Civil War, and died and is buried in that cemetery in uh, 1868. Many of you here today are familiar with the story of how Memorial Day was established, but I'll offer again as a history to ensure that all of you have heard it at least once and have an appreciation of its true meaning. There are a number of locations that claim to begin the tradition of Memorial Day by laying flowers at the grave sites of Union Confederate soldiers killed during the Civil War. My research shows that the Ladies Memorial Association in Columbus, Georgia, may have had the first idea of annually placing spring flowers on the graves of soldiers. They decided to have their annual ceremony on April 26th, 1866. Now, April 26th is important then because in 1865, 90,000 Confederate soldiers surrendered in North Carolina. And for the history buffs, that's 17 days after Lee surrendered. Water Lou New York held the first ceremony on May the 5th, 1866. And on May 5th, 1868, Major General Logan, commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization, in his order number 11, declared May 30th as Decoration Day, since there was no battle anniversary that they could find on that day. In the 1880s, the name of Decoration Day was changed to Memorial Day. And it wasn't until after World War I when uh, when, decoration, when Memorial Day was, was expanded to include personnel who died in all wars and not just the Civil War. In 1966, President Johnson declared Waterloo, New York as the birthplace of Memorial Day. And in 1971, uh, Memorial Day was established as a federal holiday to be held on the last Monday in May. Today, you may see these poppies being worn on places or on graves. These poppies you see on Memorial Day are a result of a poem written by Major John McCrae of the Canadian Army during the Battle of Yepres in Belgium in 1950 called In Flanders Fields. You see poppy seeds lie dormant on the ground until they're disturbed. Because there were so many casualties in World War I, many of the soldiers were behind enemy lines, so the Major decided one day that he was going to go visit one of his fallen comrades. In doing so, he went back to the grave sites and he saw these poppies growing in the graves. And that's how he, he uh, gave him the influence to do his, uh, write his poem. But that's not all. On November 9th, 1918, just two days before the end of World War I, after reading McCray's poem while at the YMCA convention in New York City, Ms. Myrna Michael wrote a poem called, We Shall Keep the Faith. And I'm going to read the second stanza of her three stanza poem. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. That evening be inspired by the poem, she purchased red poppies and gave them to the soldiers who were at the YMCA convention. In 1920, the poppy became the official flower of the American Legion. In 1923, the VFW took the idea from the French and began selling buddy poppies as a means to hire World War I disabled and poor veterans. A number of people confused Memorial Day for Veterans Day, in which, a day in which we honor all personnel who served in our armed forces. Many people think of Memorial Day as the beginning of summer and the end of the school year. We're here today because we know the true meaning of Memorial Day, a day to remember and honor those who died defending our nation. 
over 144 years ago, standing in a newly dedicated cemetery 15 miles from here in Gettysburg, President Lincoln honored those men who had recently fought and gave their last full measure of devotion. Men who unsure the ultimate result of the sacrifice they're about to make, but dedicated to the cause of freedom. Over 40 million Americans have stirred in our military since the Revolutionary War, and over 1.2 million have died. To date, over 140 Marylanders have died in the most recent global war on terrorism. The last soldier being Sergeant Eric Halk from Baltimore, who died on June 10, 2017, in Afghanistan. They say that service members die twice, once when they're killed and once their name is never spoken again. On Carroll County Vietnam Memorial, located adjacent to the old courthouse on Willow Street, are the names of 18 service members killed or missing in action for my war, the Vietnam War. So that they are not forgotten, I'm going to recite their names and also ask you if you know some veteran who has fallen, that you recite your, their name either out loud or to yourselves. First name is Spec 4 Russell Amos from Mount Airy. Specialist 5 Joseph Blickenstaff Jr., Westminster. Staff Sergeant James Byers, Westminster. Spec 4 Carl Egoff, Westminster. Spec 5 John Fieser, Marriottsville. Lieutenant Colonel Sherman Flanagan, Jr., MIA, Westminster. Lance Corporal Merle Grooms, Hampstead. PSC Everett Justice, Jr., Mount Airy. PFC Ronald Kenny, Mount Airy. PFC Michael Kidd, Millers. Sergeant Frederick Mansman, Westminster. PFC Russell Milbury, Union Bridge. Captain Christopher Miller, Jr., Westminster. PFC Herbert Mulkey, Jr., Mount Airy. Sergeant Joe's Orito, Westminster. Lance Corporal David Stiegler, Hampstead. Staff Sergeant Franklin Underwood, Sykesville. Sergeant First Class James Zumbrum, Manchester. Since the end of the Vietnam War, we've been involved in three conflicts. During Desert Storm in 1991, Spec 4 Charles Bowman from Westminster gave his last full measure of devotion. Since September 11, 2001, eight Carroll Countyans have died during the global war on terrorism, including two on September the 11th, 2001. So that they will never be forgotten, I will announce their names. Navy Lieutenant Commander Ron Volk and Chief Warrant Officer William Ruth, both from the Mount Airy, died on the in the Pentagon in 9-11. Corporal jo Josh Joshua Snyder, Hampstead. Lance Corporal Matthew Snyder, Westminster. Sergeant David Davis, Mount Airy. Staff Sergeant James Malakowski, Westminster. Airman First Class Matthew Seidel, Westminster. And Captain Sarah M. Kutzen Cullen, Eldersburg. And last year, Cal County resident, techni technician Second Class Timothy Eccles of Manchester died as a result of a ship collision on USS McCain. Being a Vietnam combat veteran, I know the price paid by our military to enjoy the freedoms that we have today. Since July 1, 1973, our military has been an all-voluntary force, like those eight men and women I just mentioned, who raised their right hands to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Knowing full well that they may have to lay down their lives, as Sergeant Houck did, to defend our way of life. While we're here today, remember and honor our dead, let us also honor our living. Let us not forget the parents, the spouses, the children, and other close family members who were left behind. These Gold Star members will never forget the sacrifice of the loved ones who will carry on their member forever. So if we have any Gold Star family members here today, please raise your hand. Are there any here today? Let's see. Okay. Also, like those who have uh, currently served in the military, raise your hands. Currently serving. Thank you so much. And those who have served in the armed forces, please raise your hand. Let's give them all a round of applause for the service to our nation.
President Clinton in 2000 directed that at 3 p.m. on Memorial Day, there would be a national moment of remembrance, asking everyone to pause for a minute to honor those who died defending our freedoms. I ask all of us to take one minute today to remember those who gave their all to our nation and the real reason why we celebrate Memorial Day. As you walk through this cemetery today or another cemetery and you find a veteran's grave, stop and speak their name so that it also will never be forgotten. I ask you also stop at the Vietnam Memorial, as I mentioned above. I want to thank you for the opportunity for being here, and God bless the state of Maryland and the United States of America. Thank you. I got this proclamation, so if you want to make it, that's it. Thank you, the Honorable Robert Finn, Bob Finn. At this time, I'm going to call on Bob Finn for the proclamation to be presented to Mayor Joe Dominic. Bob Finn, will you please do the honor? Thank you. Mayor, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the State of Maryland Proclamation from the Governor of the State of Maryland, Memorial, Memorial Day, May 28, 2018. Whereas on Memorial Day, as throughout the year, we honor and pray for the men and women in uniform who answered the call of duty to maintain the security of our country and the liberties we hold so dear. And whereas we as Americans have the solemn duty to perpetuate the memory of those who believe so deeply in what our country could be and are willing to give their lives to protect this freedom. And whereas it is appropriate and fitting for us to recognize the right or role Marylanders play and have played throughout history while faithfully and honorably serving in the armed forces. And whereas all citizens of Maryland, united in our solemn respect, shall pay homage to those who gave their last full measure of devotion in service to our nation so that we might continue to enjoy the freedoms we so deeply cherish. Now therefore, I, Lawrence J. Hogan, Jr., Governor of the State of Maryland, to hereby proclaim May 28, 2018 as Memorial Day in Maryland and do commend this observation to all our citizens, given it under my hand, the great seal of the state of Maryland this 20th day of 2018, Larry Hogan, Jr. Governor, Boyd Rutherford, Lieutenant Governor, and John Wilbon Smith, Secretary of State. So with that, Mayor, I hand you this proclamation. Again, thank you. Thank you, Bob Finn. Right now, it's my pleasure for our benediction this morning to introduce to you from the Westminster United Methodist Church our benediction by the Reverend Malcolm Stranathan. Good morning. Thank you, Honorable Finn, for your uh, note about the uh, Flanders Field and the poem that was written by uh, Lieutenant Colonel McRae. It closes with its own sort of benediction. A benediction is often thought to be um, a close to the ceremony, but a benediction is also a commissioning and a sending out and a sending forward for you, the people that have gathered for a hallowed moment. And so I want to begin with a reminder of Lieutenant Colonel McRae's close to his poem, where he says these words, we are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, fell down, or felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. Benediction should be received full face, looking up. And so, my friends, Fellow Americans, 
We send you out into the world to hold your head up high with a sense of humility that what you have comes from those who have died in service to our nation, providing the liberties and the opportunities that we have to avail and to share. Go into the world in service to God and our nation, for we pray this in our Lord's name. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Stranathan of the United Westminster United Methodist Church. And now it's my pleasure to welcome here this morning for the singing of our national anthem. She is a 2010 alumnus of Westminster High School. It is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Bailey Wolf. All uniform personnel in all military units, bring your units to attention and present arms. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the She did so well that almost bears having her do that again. <laughs> Very good, Ms. Bailey Wolf. Not only am I honored to be here today with the American Legion Post 31, I also want to recognize another group of wonderful veterans who are here with us today. And you will notice they are over on the distance here as they get ready to do the firing squad. Let's welcome our friends from VFW Post Mobile Farm 467 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And now, the gentleman from the VFW Post 467 with the ceremonial firing squad.
all uniform personnel in all military units. Bring your units to a attention and stand at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, that wonderful taps and echo, Greg Wance and David Miller of the Westminster Municipal Band. Gentlemen, well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that brings to a conclusion this Memorial Day ceremony, a very solemn ceremony, a very reflective ceremony. And again, it cannot be said enough and it looks like the weather gods may be smiling upon us after all today for us to enjoy each other's company and remember our veterans who have left us, who are still with us to this day and are serving to this day. Reach out in your own way. Embrace the day. Embrace the moment of being with them and remembering those who are no longer with us while you're enjoying the Memorial Day activities that so many have fought so hard for us to enjoy. Thank you all so very much. I want to again want to thank the Westminster Municipal Band. Job well done. The American Legion Post 31 for having me again this year to MC this. My name is Bruce Main. It's been my pleasure hopefully for many more years to come, with our good friends from the VFW Moville Post 467, Mayor Dominic, Chief Spaulding, Father, Father Mark from St. John's, Mark Bialek, Reverend Mal Malcolm Stranathan from the Westminster United Methodist Church, and all the participants, Ms. Burbage with her fine singing, and Miss Bailey Wolf with her rendition of the national anthem. Thank you all so very much. God bless each and every one of you. God bless America. Thank you. <laughs>